Okay, so, sorry about uh, the way that last video ended quite abruptly. Um, I'm the only person here in the office, and uh, some people came by, and I had to uh, get to it. Um, okay. This is that missing slide um, that, that was not supposed to be in the last um, video. Here is right here. Um, so we already covered those things. We already covered that. And we already covered the fact of don't let money burn a hole in your pocket. I mean that's just a that's just a, that's just a good principle. So uh, now we're going to be talking about faithfulness, how to get a job, and what laziness is. First off, faithfulness. Um, a job is a commitment to your employer to show up on time and do your best. Part of being responsible is being faithful. Okay, a job is a commitment to your employer to show up on time and do your best. If you're not going to do your best, if you're not going to show up on time, don't get a job. That is your commitment to your employer. This is this is the employer says I'm looking for someone to work for me. They have to show up at these times and they have to do this job. See, in today's society, we, we judge. Oh, this is a crap job. I don't I don't like my boss. I I this I that. That doesn't excuse. That doesn't excuse it. You're there to do your job, and you're there, there to do the job that you're hired to. You're not there to criticize your boss's tactics. You're not there to criticize the, the job itself. You're there to do the job. You are making a commitment. Your marriage. A marriage is a commitment before God to your spouse for faithfulness, for love, and for service. That is a commitment that you made to your spouse. Ministry is a commitment to God that you will do a service. God, I am going to do this. So people depend on you. That you put your trust in somebody else, somebody else puts their trust in you. People depend on you. And what happens when you fail in these areas is, well, understand what's happening here. You fail at your job. You don't do what you are, what's required of you. You get fired. You fail in your marriage. You don't do what's required of you, what's expected of you, what com you committed yourself to. Often ends in divorce. Hopefully it doesn't, but sometimes it does. Um, uh, ministry. You know, oh, you start this ministry and then you don't stay faithful to it. You don't do the job that you said that you were going to do. See what I mean? Other people miss out on it because of what you decided to do. So, um, uh, but, however, prayer and your spiritual walk are non-negotiable. These are things that are of utmost importance. you got to stay in the Word or else you just start making stuff up. you got to stay in prayer or else you won't know God. Seek God daily for more than just a few minutes. What some people do is they have their five-minute prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. See what I mean? That's not really even prayer. Those are just words that you say. You need to seek God. Okay? Or sometimes what we do is we sit down for five or ten minutes and then, oh, I'm done. But did you accomplish what you went there for? See what I mean? Don't finish when you're done, but when you're done. Anyways, um, being responsible is not necessarily doing everything right now. Um, I do want to. I do want to contrast this because some people, in trying not to be lazy, they think that they have to do everything, and they have to do. I think they have to do everything right now. Well, that's not responsible. Being responsible, that's being irresponsible. See what I mean? Because you're not. You didn't plan out your day, so now everybody else has to co has to cover for you. Oh well, I, I, I'm. I can't do that because I'm doing. The, I'm doing this right now, and, and, and I'm doing this right now, and, 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 and slow down for a second, okay? That's called being irresponsible. Um, and uh, being irresponsible is, is, is the same as being lazy. They're just two extremes. Do you want to be lazy or do you want to be irresponsible? I mean, goodness sakes. And laziness obviously is a form of irresponsibility, but still. Um, so balance between laziness and irresponsible. Uh, don't inconvenience your boss with your favors. What we like to do is we like to say, okay, I'm going to do this person a favor, so they have to be inconvenienced by it. I'll give you an example. My wife wants me to clean the gutters. So what I'm going to do is, right when she's in the middle of making dinner, I'm going to ask her to come out here and, I don't know, hold the ladder, for instance. But I'm doing you a favor. See what I mean? That's not doing a favor anymore, because now you're inconveniencing the person you're doing the favor for. Oh, I'm going to come by and, and surprise them. I'm going to I'm gonna buy them a car. Uh, one time, I'll never forget this, a pastor, somebody bought a, a car for a pastor, okay? And then gave him the payments. Put it in his name and everything, but then gave him the payments. So they were doing him a favor, but now he has to pay for the payments. So I mean, that's not doing a favor, because you're inconveniencing the pastor. You didn't even want that car. So I mean, um, and then uh, 
Another example is let's say your kid, you have a kid, they're all grown up and they need something, right? And so you go over to do them a favor, but they're in the middle of a huge project. So they have to stop their project to help you be able to do the job that, to, that you're doing a favor for them for. So I mean, that's not a favor anymore. By definition, that, that's actually not a favor. That's um, recruiting somebody else's time for something that they didn't agree to. It's best to follow this as a standard. Communicate. That's just a generally good standard. Hey, honey, I will clean the gutters. How about this date and time? Does this work? Is, in case I need any help, will you be around to help me? Um, hey, um, hey, son, I'm going to come over and help you, help you with this, whatever. But how, how is this time? Then at least they can find a stopping point if they're not if they're if they're not finished with it by then. At least they can find a stopping point. But see, when we just offer up favors and then recruit other people to help us do the favors, that's not a favor. Um, procrastination and laziness are homeboys. Okay, this is the other side of that. I talked about the being over exertive. Now we're going to talk about the other side. And also signing up for too much stuff, that's being irresponsible with your time. Okay? People think, oh, if I'm not doing enough, I'm being irresponsible with my time. No. Signing up for too much is being irresponsible with your time. So, and then now we're on the other side of the spectrum though, procrastination. Procrastination says, okay, I'll do this at this time. But then you don't actually do it. It goes hand in hand with laziness. Oh, well, I was meaning to do it, but you didn't do it. It doesn't matter what you intend to do. It matters what you actually do. It's like when you're talking to people. It doesn't matter what you meant. It matters how they received it, how they understood it. Okay. Um, so I will do that, just not right now. That's what the person who procrastinates says. Um, don't overcommit. I just said this. You will not have enough time. You will, you will have too many things and just not enough time to do all those things. And you will burn out. You will get tired of doing it and you'll, be, you'll, you'll just want to quit everything. And rather than just quitting the one thing that you burned out from, you'll want to quit everything. Um, and you will always let something go. Something will always take priority. Um, uh, take, for instance, me with these, with, with these videos. Um, I thought I could pop out all the videos at once and put them all up on the internet and everything. Well, yeah, except I'm still working full time. See what I mean? So this suffered. I, even though I said that I was going to do videos every week, now my videos are suffering because I had to pick between my job and my, and my videos. See what I mean? So I overcommitted with how many videos I could do. So now I have some downtime in doing them now. But still, don't overcommit. Um, balance. Make a schedule and stick to it. See, the laziness in us doesn't follow the schedule that we make. But the irresponsibility in us doesn't make a schedule. See, I didn't make a schedule and, not, and I didn't communicate with you what I was planning on doing. So now you have to help me do what I should have done before, but now I have to do now. See what I mean? That's irresponsibility. So, how to get a job. Um, let me read Mark 10, 5 through 9 first. It kind of closes up that last section. Mark 10, 5 through 9. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So, um... <clears throat> A little bit of a side note. Realize that if your kid is married, you're, they're no longer under your authority. They're under their spouse's authority. Remember that. Um, oops. There we go. All right. Um, so how to get a job. You know, others see you differently than you see you. And I'm gonna, I'll talk more about the whole parent thing in the authority lesson, which is lesson 12. Um, for, for now, just kind of forget I said that, and I'll explain what I mean by that, because I realize it could be mistook for what I meant it to mean. So just hold off on that, and we'll work on this, and then we'll get back to that. Uh, how to get a job. So, okay. All right. Others see you differently than you see you. Okay, you're going to say, okay, I'm, I don't look that bad or whatever. Then other somebody's going to say, well, he doesn't clip his fingernails. He's got food in his teeth, whatever. Um, so when you're getting a job, presentation is key. I know, oh, but God judges the heart. Yeah, but man is still judging the outs outward appearance regardless of what God judges. That's just something you need to accept. Um, so first off, shower. 
If you go in there smelling, that's disgusting. They're not going to hire you. If you go in, go in there wearing too much cologne, they're going to say that's disgusting and they're not going to hire you. They, they're, not gonna, they're not going to, to want that, that extremeness. Um, and also, by the way, um, overindulgence in one area can usually warn somebody of something. Like let's say you're a hefty person. Sometimes that gives off the, um, the opinion that you um, love pleasure too much. So that is something to think about. If you use too much clone, that can often give off, give off the impression that you're not disciplined. Just some things to think about. And they may or may not be true. It doesn't matter if it's true. It matters how somebody perceives it to be. Okay? We're talking about how to get a job, not whether these things are right or wrong, just the fact that they are. Um, shave. Uh, you don't want to go in there looking scraggly and stuff. Uh, that's just general principle. Um, but also, this is a good thing to build in yourself. When you get up every day and shave, it cha it, 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 it's different than, than... Like, let's say, for instance, if you come from a uh, drug background. Well, when you were on drugs, you got up whenever you wanted, and you went to sleep whenever you wanted, and you didn't really sleep well anyways, and you... Uh, you know, you, you, you didn't really have a set cycle, you just kind of became complacent in life. And that's what happens. So when you get up and shave and, and take a shower every day, it builds up a sense of um, discipline in your life. So, um, cut your hair. Oftentimes, you know, we go in there with crazy long hair and stuff, and it's all crazy and wild and everything, and your boss is just like, nope. I mean, you don't have to like it, but that's just the way it is. Um, wash your clothes. Uh, I personally... Don't I I I, uh, I I don't fold um not fold but um uh, straighten my clothes on purpose. I hate the way it looks. I I, I, I love the way it looks when a shirt looks wrinkled and, and, and like it should. But I mean obviously if I was going in for a job I would I wouldn't say that. If you go in for a job you should iron out your shirts. Um so um but wash your clothes, make sure they're clean. Stand up straight and have a spring in your step. Don't stand all hunched over. People notice your posture. Your the way you present yourself presents a message. So rather than doing that, stand up straight. Have a spring in your step. Don't look like you're dragging the weight of the world. And when you speak, look up. Look at the person that I speak clearly. My name is Michael. I'm, I would like this job. See what I mean? You, you're, you're trying to instill that confidence in them. Not in the fact that you're confident in yourself like you're arrogant, but you're confident that you are able to meet what they are wanting in a person. You want to build up confidence for them. You want them to be confident in you, in your abilities, that you're able to do this, and you want to be confident that uh, you know that you will be able to do this and that you will be able to do a good job. Not like, oh no, I'll be able to do the best job, but like, I can do this. I can do this. It's the attitude that, that, that makes it arrogant. It's not the words, okay? Um, so stand up straight. Speak clearly. Also, if you notice, I, when I when I have a lot of things in my mind, I tend to say it really fast and don't really pronounce it very well. When you're in, when you're in a job interview, don't do that. Speak slowly and clearly. It, it, I would rather sound like I was retarded than sound like I was um, maybe lazy or unfocused. See what I mean? Um, because, well, I'm sure you see what I'm saying. So speak clearly. Show that you want the job. It's just like dating. When you go, when you go, when you go up to the girl, do you say, "Okay, um, I'm the guy you want"? Well, no, you don't say that. That's cocky. Um, you you go up and you say, "Look, you know, you, you shower, you shave, you cut your hair, you present yourself well." You say, "Look, I'm interested in you. Can I take you out?" So I mean, it, you, it, it's the exact same thing with a job. I'm interested in this job. Can I have this job? <laughs> um, so show that you want the job, not the. And also think about this: when you go and ask a ask a girl on a date, do you say this? Um, I I I understand if you say no, but I'd like a date. If but I, I, if you don't, don't, no, you don't do something like that. You present yourself and you say, you know, you look them in the eye and you make them you make them feel like they're important to you. It's the exact same thing with the job. Make the boss feel like this job is important to you. Let them know that you want it. And obviously, I know it's kind of weird hearing a job compared to dating, but uh, I mean, hey, if it gets the point across, right? Um, so, uh, laziness. Let's talk about laziness after mentioning it so much. What is laziness? Laziness is a byproduct of little surrenders to oneself. What does that mean? Um, 
a little surrender is like, oh, I'll just stay in bed for five more minutes. So you snoo hit the snooze on your alarm. You hit the snooze 15 different times. One day you may only hit it once, but the next day you hit it like three times. See what I mean? It's a byproduct of those little surrenders to oneself. Oh, this it doesn't matter. It's just a little thing. Will those little things add up and they make you they they turn and they make you lazy? Um, Proverbs six. Proverbs 6, um, 1 through 35, the whole chapter really um, talks about this. I'm only going to read some. Um, oh, man, the whole proverb is pretty good. I don't even know where, where I want to read. Um, actually, let me just say um, that Proverbs 6, 1 through 35 is just a good place to, uh, to read if, if you're having any questions about what I'm talking about here. Um, and he talks about adultery and stuff, a little surrender to yourself. At first it's, oh, I'm just taking an extra glance. Oh, she's, hey, she's hot. And then it's, you know, looking maybe a little bit longer than you should, even a store or a magazine or something like that. And then it slowly works its way towards pornography. Then it works its way towards adultery. I mean, all these different things. Um, where you justify it and you're giving yourself little surrenders in your life, but you justify it. Um, there's, there, there's so much. I'll just read 6, 7, and 8 of, of chapter 6. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. Talking about how the, even the ant knows how to, how to uh, work towards its own well-being. So the lazy justify not working with finding obstacles or an easier way. Well, I could do it like that, or hey, maybe if I do it like this, or or, or well, it's kind of hot. I'll wait till the afternoon. Well, now it's still hot, so I'll, and, oh, I lost too much light. I'll do it in the morning. So I mean, constantly finding an easy way, an easier way out, or or there's obstacles. Oh, my back hurts, and and you know sometimes they'll be legitimate, but that's exactly what, exactly what the lazy what the lazy person counts on is they just wait for a legitimate excuse to look to come up. They're, they're, they're masters of creating elements as to why they can't do it right now. Once again, procrastination goes hand in hand with laziness. Um, well, maybe if I did it this way. Oh, I'll wait till summer. If I do it now, I'll get hurt. I need someone else. See what I mean? Um, so, there's that. Proverbs 26, uh, 16 says, A sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. Seven people who answer discreetly, okay? So check this out. This is what a lazy person does. You'll tell them to do something at work, okay? Move this pellet over there, okay? And they'll say, It would make more sense if I left it because we're going to need it for this display here. And they're going to give you 15 different reasons why they shouldn't move it. See? A lazy person is wiser in his own eyes. That's exactly what we're talking about here. The lazy justify not working. Well, no, uh, I think it would be better if it, we'll just move it. So then they get in conflict, in conflict with the boss. But my boss thinks I'm an idiot. You don't do what your boss tells you to do. You always argue with him about everything. Just do what he told you to do. You took the job with the understanding that you would do what he told you to do. Um, also, realize that laziness is a gradual process. It's not just something that appears out of thin air. It's something that, um, as, as you as you um, continue to, to do things that are lazy, you build up habits which uh, further deepen you in that, um, and that's how that's how it kind of builds up on each other. A little sleep, a little slumber. Proverbs six ten through eleven. A little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man, and scarcity like an armed man. Oh, I don't have ga uh, gas for my car. Well, there's probably a reason for it. Not always. Sometimes genuinely crap happens. But a lot of times we uh, we look for reasons, uh, look for excuses and things um, where there really was no excuse. It was just our fault. So laziness is a gradual process. Um, a little sleep, a little slumber, all just... Just a five minute more nap. Well, yeah, but that's five more minutes in your day, and these minutes are going to add up, and then by the end of the day, you're not going to get your to do list done. See what I mean? It's important that you plan out your day. Laziness is a gradual process. See, what we do is we think that we're think that we not lazy because we're doing a lot of things. 
oh, I do this and this and this. Well, that's not ne doesn't necessarily mean that you're not lazy. In fact, I'll go a step further. When you look at a lazy person, you can't you usually can't pick them out of a lineup. Posture does not dictate whether someone's lazy or not. Oftentimes, you'll see someone slouching. You'll just assume that they're lazy, but they're actually the one that, that, that's, a, that's a hard worker. See what I mean? You can't go by that. Laziness is, is not easy to distinguish. No one wakes up and thinks, I will be lazy. They just gradually fall into a place of being apathetic towards the world or whatever. Um, snoozing the alarm, taking lo longer and longer breaks, those kinds of things. Or I'll just take a five-minute break. Ten minutes. Fifteen. Twenty. Thirty. Seventy. Um, laziness is brought on by soft choices in life, okay? Not working in bad conditions, for instance. That would be a soft choice. Um, oh, it's snowing, so I, mm, I, I don't think that, no, okay, yeah, that's dangerous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slip and fall and hurt myself, so I'll, I'll do it some other time. See, once again, it's brought on by those soft choices. Proverbs 20, 20 verse 4 says, sluggards do not plow in season. So at harvest time, they look but find nothing. Sluggards do not plow in season. So at harvest time, they look but find nothing. They're expecting the fruit of the labor without actually doing the labor. Think about the person who, who doesn't work and then says, you know, hey, I need gas money for my car. They didn't plow in season, and then they want something. See what I mean? But then they look for it, and it's not there. Because they they, they had that they, they made those soft choices. Think about this: life is the ultimate test of laziness. If you build up in your younger years, when you're older, you'll have retirement. The ultimate in um, in uh, laziness, okay? Especially in America, not so much in other in other countries necessarily, but surely you see the idea of what I'm saying. And I'm not saying about how some people are born into bad bad situations. I understand that. I'm not talking about that at all. Um, but I'm just trying to show you a model. Um, so these carefully reasoned, um, carefully reasoned choices become a lifestyle. Okay, as they make these decisions, they continue to make decisions like them that further reinforce the idea. Proverbs 19:15 says, "Laziness brings on deep sleep, sleep, and the shiftless go hungry." So. Um, Lazy people uh, don't value time. I'll just do it tomorrow. Um, okay, uh, I'll just do it tomorrow. Uh, live in the now. Just enjoy the moment. Um, uh, each day is as good as the next. Time really doesn't doesn't matter um, to them. And and obviously, uh, um, seizing an opportunity doesn't really matter to them either. Um, Proverbs 12:24. You know, I knew somebody who who worked at a job that they hated and they complained about it all the time. But nevertheless, um, even with how lazy they were, the, the 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 boss still tried to promote them. And what they saw was they thought they thought it was an inconvenience, and they said no. So they worked the same job for years later. They could have gone to that promotion, and although that promotion was not the end, it could have allowed them to get a better job somewhere else. See what I mean? The lazy person doesn't understand opportunities. He understands just simply the day. That's why video games are often um, at the home of the lazy person. Uh, cable is often at the home of the lazy person. You would be surprised at how many people who, ha who, have, who rent from someone have cable but cannot afford rent. It's just they don't value time. Uh, anyways, Proverbs 12.24 says, Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. Diligent hands will rule. That guy's a CEO, so he's lazy. And did, did, no, he's actually probably the CEO because he worked his butt off for his whole life. That's probably why he became the CEO. Not always, but usually. Uh, laziness ends in forced labor. Laziness ends in forced labor. Think about that and think about slavery, and I'm sure you'll start to see what he's saying there. Um, seriously consider these words. Chew on them. Um, the lazy don't finish tasks. Oh, actually, I'll come back to that one. Does not consider that he must one day give an account to the Lord. This isn't doesn't even enter, his, enter the equation. Oh, I just lived. Night is for sleep regardless of whether it is earned. When nighttime comes, they just go to, go to bed because that's just what you do. 
It, it has. It doesn't matter whether they earned the sleep. He says, "Oh, well, it's nighttime. I sleep." Winter is not to enjoy the fruit of his labors, but it's an intrusion into his schedule. And obviously, this doesn't necessarily mean literal winter, but there's a time of, of harvest. There's a time of plowing. There's a time. Of, there's a time of, of enjoying the fruit of your labors. Okay, and uh, for for the lazy person, like I said, with that promotion, he, the, excuse me, the promotion was an intrusion. That could have been his winter. He would have had to do less and get paid more, eventually. Maybe not at first, because at first you have to prove yourself at the job or whatever, and then you can kind of get into the position. Like the CEO, for instance, doesn't do that much legwork, does a lot of other stuff, but he doesn't really have to do too much legwork usually. Um, he to, has to be the face of the company, give us a few speeches and those kinds of things. I'm not to say the CEOs don't do anything. That's what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying they don't have to do the crap work that the lowers have to do. That's why they're CEO. They worked hard and they got there. Um, so, but for a lazy person, the win that winter season, um, he can't enjoy the fruit of his labors because he doesn't have any fruit of his labors. It's an intrusion into his schedule. It's an intrusion into his cycle. You have to give give more away and not get any in return. He'll say. Eventually, he loses his freedom because he, he has no job. He gets into debt because he doesn't have a job. Then he can't afford rent. And so he eventually loses his freedom. He can't. He after this, he can't do the things that, that he wanted to do. He can't live the way he wanted to live uh, because the winter uh, intruded on him. So um, the lazy don't finish tasks; they overlook opportunities. I already kind of mentioned this. Um, job opportunities become inconveniences. Maintenance of belongings and even eating becomes inconvenience. Oh, I I don't know. I, I mean, I have the food. It, I just don't want to. I just don't want to take the time to toast it. You know what I mean? Like everything becomes an inconvenience. It becomes something that he's not willing to put forth the time. Maintenance of belongings. Well, if I just you know take my my um, my spray was it those air bottle cans and spray out my my PlayStation, it would work better. But you know, whatever. So I mean. You just kind of lazy person just doesn't even care about a large majority of things. Um, Proverbs twelve twenty seven um, says the lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. Twenty four thirty through thirty one, and it's interesting to note that the lazy person is often equated with the wicked person in Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs twenty four thirty through thirty one. I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of somewhere who has no sense. Someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruins. See, the lazy person always has a to-do list, but it's never getting done because he procrastinates instead of just doing it. Um, Ecclesiastes 10:18. That's not where it is. Ecclesiastes 10:18. Where are you, Ecclesiastes? There. Um, through, la um, through laziness, the rafters sag. Because of idle hands, the house leaks. Because of idle hands. Also, the Bible constantly war warns about idle hands. Um, so, um, um, the lazy don't finish tasks. They overlook opportunity. Did I already say that? I already did say that. Okay. When the lazy aren't sleeping, they are desiring. I want to do this. I, I need to do this and, I, and this and this and this. this. See, people think that lazy people are those people who sit around doing nothing all day. Well, yes, I, although that can be a form of laziness, um, the lazy person, the truly lazy person, is the person um, who's not just apathetic. It's beyond that. He wants to do things. He just simply never has the time. So he has a restless mind and, and an inactive body. And so he becomes frustrated. And so he often takes out his frustration on everybody else. Oftentimes, these people come to church and they'll say, Hey, you know, hey, um, do your Christian duty and provide for me. Okay, whoa, that was never part of the Christian duty. In fact, if you read First Thessalonians, or 2 Thessalonians, one of the Thessalonians, he says, you know, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. These people, you shouldn't be, um, be busybodies. You should be out there doing the work. And it's the exact same thing. Um, exact same thing. Uh, here, uh, you know, and then they get mad, and you know, you have to ask, why are they mad? Well, usually they're mad because um, they're frustrated.
through with themselves or the circumstances, and so they take it out on you because you won't bail them out of it, even though they got themselves into it. Um, laziness is the exact opposite of responsibility. Um, so the lazy people are generally desiring for, for desiring to get things done. Um, sometimes there are those people who just don't want to ever do anything. There are those people too. But uh, for a grand majority of the time, the lazy person isn't that obvious. It's, it's the person who they, they genuinely want to do things. They're just not committed to anything. Proverbs 21, 25 through 26 says, uh, The craving of a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. But he craves, but he doesn't work. So he keeps craving and getting things and trying to get things without doing the work for them. Um, All day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. See, the the, the, the wicked and, and the lazy, they're always striving for more and more and more. But the righteous person, he's giving stuff away. See what I mean? Complete opposite. Not he has an abundance, he gives an abundance. So, um... Nineteen twenty-four says the sluggard buries his hands in the dish. He will not even bring it back to his mouth. Oh, well, I, that's ridiculous. Is it though? I, I knew one guy that was so lazy that he had the food in the microwave and it just kept beeping. Dee dee dee. You know, microwaves do that so that if you try to cook something at night, it wakes up everybody in the house. Goodness sakes. Uh, and and so so it's all sitting there. All he had to do was get up and go get it, and he wouldn't do it. Finally, his food got so cold, and it was after dinner time, and it was meant to be a, a, a mid-breakfast thing, that he just stuck, that he just migrated it again, and then finally he ate it at 2 in the morning. See what I mean? Um, 26.14. As a door turns on its, on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. Desires pleasure, pleasure fulfills less and less, produces more desire and more laziness. See what I mean? Because things that are not earned are oftentimes not appreciated. And so they will have things that they greatly desire, and then they'll want more things and more things because it's fulfilling them less and less. But it's gonna, it, 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 he's going to desire more and more even though he's getting more and more. And so he'll become more and more lazy. Um, anyways, I'm sure you see the, you see the cycle. The lazy are destructive at work as well. Um, and better for the employer if he doesn't even come. No initiative and no follow through. He doesn't just get up and do things. He always has to be told to do them, and then he has no follow through when he does want to do something. Employers transfer lazy people to less strategic positions because they're just such an inconvenience to have, and then the lazy person gets offended, or and either quits, or creates disloyalty by whining about the boss to all the other people, or and, and spread discontentment. Um, that job. Um, that job didn't work out because the boss didn't like me, or the boss was a racist, so he picked on me. Okay, I guess that's a possibility. But the majority of the times, what happens is um, we don't want to do what we don't like being told what to do. I mean, that's just a general human trait. You don't even have to be lazy for that one to be true. Proverbs 18, um, 18 9 says, um, One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. Um, so when they're at work, these are the people who you have at work that, like, you ask them to do a simple task and the vacuum ends up broken. Well, how did that happen? It wasn't my fault. You know, see what I mean? These are, these are those people. As ben, do you want to be that person? Do you want people to think of you like this, or do you want to be responsible? There's a balance there. As vinegar, so as vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so are sluggards to those who send them. I pity the the parent who tries to get their child out of out of a problem and try to get them hired, um, and then obviously the uh, it doesn't really work out because their child's lazy, um, and then it just blows back on the parent. I pity that situation. Um, laziness causes fear, which causes laziness. Fear of no food, so they sleep to remedy, but then they have no food, so they see what I mean. Um, so fear of no food, sleep to remedy. Lazy people try to get others to provide for the food, gas, and other needs. And then eventually they run out of people to depend on, so then they get more frustrated. Lazy people resort to anger if others don't help, which usually comes from their irritation of their situation or their actions. Proverbs 22.13 um, says, uh, The sluggard says, There's a lion outside. I'll be killed in the public square. See, they're always creating all these different things, and not just creating reasons why they can't do stuff, 
but um, creating stuff because they don't do stuff, okay? Um, like the fear of no food. So they sleep to remedy. See what I mean? Um, trying to detach themselves from reality. And the thing about video games is video games are totally fine. And I have a problem with I I I play video games all the time. But what happens for the lazy person is it becomes a source of escape. Rather than doing the things, rather than, than focusing the reality, uh, dealing with the reality at their hands, they always try to escape from this reality by, by creating things. Um, all this developed because you slowly chose pleasure over hard work. Pleasure is not bad. Pleasure in too high doses is bad. It's like eating. Eating's fine, but when you overindulge, that is the problem. Um, and don't forget that all are prone to laziness. Oh, I'm not lazy. All are prone to lazy, and anybody can be lazy and become lazy at any stage of their life. Never forget that. Um, so that wraps up the conclusion, the discussion on responsibility. Remember, if you have any questions, to post them below. Um, next week we'll be talking about conscience, having a clear conscience, um, and how that relates to the Christian life. Um, I hope you found this lesson beneficial. I know I had to book through a lot of it. There's just so much stuff, and honestly, there could be there could be hours and hours and hours of, of lessons, teachings on this stuff. Uh, but anyway, see you next time.